Hello, everyone. This is Ron, and I'm back with you with another episode of Empire Coins and Collectibles. I just wanted to share something fairly quick with you. I received mail today, so this is basically uh, my opening mail. I don't know if it was from eBay or if it was from uh, one of our subscribers who said they were sending something to us. There's nothing on the envelope except for the addressing, and it's kind of generic. So I'm going to quickly go to the desk camera, show you the envelope, then we're going to cut it open and see what it is. And it's kind of a discovery for all of us viewing this episode right now. Okay, let's go ahead and do that without further ado and get started on the envelope opening. This shouldn't be that difficult because um, I can kind of feel it's right there. So I'm going to cut this part off right there. So what we've done is open this part of the envelope and it slides out and it looks like we've got a coin. There's no, there's no letter. There's no information provided with the envelope. Let me just open it up right quick to see that uh, I didn't miss anything. And it appears that today I'm all thumbs. Okay, I'm looking in. So there's nothing in the envelope. Okay. So this is what we have. I do have my coin microscope turned on. And for those of you that uh, get into collecting coins, uh, these things are not super expensive. You can buy a good coin microscope for about 300 bucks. Uh, you can buy cheaper ones that still serve a good purpose. Uh, but I would highly recommend that you uh, get one because it'll help you uh, inspect the coins. Now, this is a 94. I think I know which one it is. Uh, because if it is, it's one I, yes, I ordered off of eBay. And you can't really see anything about it. So this I ordered off of eBay. I think I might have paid um, nine, ten bucks for it. So what we're going to do is open the little baggie. And we'll be very careful in handling it. Hopefully I will not drop it. And we're going to put it under the coin microscope so you can see why I bought this coin. So we're push positioning it. Let me go ahead and change the cameras. Okay, we you should be seeing now this coin under the coin microscope and it's it's focused pretty good and we're going to go tour around the coin and there it is look at those markings to the left and above the lincoln memorial do you see what i'm seeing and of course naturally my toothpick has disappeared I'm notorious about losing toothpicks, so I guess I'll have to use my ink pen. So if we look right in this area right there, we see a significant bar moving up into the E from the Lincoln Memorial. Now, here's the question I would ask you. I'm thinking two things that it could be. It could be a non-retained struck through debris that damaged the working die and impressed its image on the working die when it struck the previous planchet with the debris between the working die and the coin okay this might have been on the hammer die uh excuse me the um, uh, anvil die because it's on the reverse uh, it could be either one but and in this case we'll say the am the uh, anvil die uh, in any case, it could be impressed debris that were, was not retained on the coin uh, and it left that image on the die. Or it could be what? It could be a clash die type uh, error. Now, a clash die says that this working die hammered to, uh, a... Um, planchet to mint a coin, the planchet was released and then it clashed again with the other die and pressing the image on it. But, you know, I, I'm not so sure that that is the case because when you think about it, this, I don't know of any image on the Lincoln profile side that would provide those. And we'll turn it over in just a moment. 
Now, if if the uh, coin that it minted previously stayed in there and then rotated a bit, these might be columns of the Lincoln Mor Memorial. But I don't think that that's it, because if you look at the Lincoln Memorial, they have these corrugated lines running up and down the columns. I believe these are Corinthian columns on the uh, Lincoln Memorial. So it's not that. Uh, there's a couple of other things it could be. It could be bad planchets. The planchets kind of uh, uh, were not properly prepared. It could be uh, zinc rot. But the only problem with zinc rot is we have these uniform lines running up and down here and here. So I don't think it's zinc rot where it outgasses and bubbles up and separates the copper plating from the uh, zinc planchet. What else could it be? Well, you tell me. Is this clash dies? Is it a struck through non-retained debris that damaged the working die and pressed that image on the working die? It's not zinc rot. What else could it be? It could be maybe another image was minted on the planchet, and then this coin, this Lincoln scent, was minted over that previous uh, planchet that was minted into a different type of coin. I don't think that that's the case. I think it's either flash die, not very likely, or a non-retained struck through debris that damaged the working die. So what's your assessment of it? Which one of those do you think it is? Or have I missed something? What other possibilities are out there that it could be? This is what's so curious and fun about working through your coins that you bought and collected and even your pocket change. There's no wonder or what you might find in your pocket change. Something, some coin that is, has something unique on it or about it that makes it worth more than face value. All right, my friends, just a real quick episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. You let me know down in the comments below what you think, what type of error this coin is. You take care again and all the best. Thank you.